thank you good evening everybody welcome to this new webinar of this series about volume and order flow uh, actually today we have entered the new month of october so uh, exactly as following a, a specific path uh, in order in, in terms of uh, volume and order flow uh, uh, thematics uh, this month we will be uh, talking a little bit more about what order flow analysis is. Uh, more specifically, last time, last month, in, throughout the month of September, we have gone through uh, different aspects of what volume uh, analysis is in terms of overall volume, not lots of, not that much dist distinguished in terms of by buying volume and selling volume uh, so this month we are gonna go even deeper into that so we will be introducing today uh the order flow as general topic and from now on uh, until the end of the series as the end of november we will be discussing order flow in terms of what kind of tools can be used to actually read what they read and interpret, what the flow of orders entering the market is, and what kind of information it gives, it, it, it tells us, and how they can be used in order to help us making decisions in terms of trading. Uh, so uh, that's going to be a really exciting hopefully <laughs> topic for uh, for all of you uh, i hope what we have gone through last month uh was clear enough was helpful enough for many of you for all of you hopefully you have already uh, started maybe to uh, consider those uh tools and the levels they provide as inflection points uh, in helping you making trading decisions. For example, for instance, as we were uh, talking last time about market profile, we can we can see that most of the levels, let me just take the market profile chart for you. Here it is. Okay, let's just have a quick look at the current day TPO profile because there is something interesting we uh, can spot immediately. Um, do you remember last time we were last week we were talking about bad lows? Well, there is one exactly at the low of the day. As you can see, we have a double print. At the very bottom of the day, we have a B print and a C print determining the low of the day. At the high, we have one single G print. And as we can see yesterday, we had what it is very similar to. Oh, sorry, I'm not. I'm not sharing my screen. I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna <laughs> repeat that all once again. Here it is the example I was telling you about today. That's the current section session market profile. As you can see at the bottom, we have a double print. We have the bottom of the day given by the B print and the C print, which is completely overlapped to the B print. So we have an overlapping of two prints determining what it is a bad low for the current session. On the high, we have only one print determining the high of the day, but this is not that much, that much important as this is important. Yesterday, the, car, the session, the previous session, which is yesterday, gave us a very nice reversal tail rejecting the upper levels. All of the prices above what ideally 
that's the technical level of 4,300 4, even, which it also counts as a round number, was completely rejected by this reversal tail, which not only is a single print, but shows a very quick price action over a different number of prices, showing actually market was trading that area with lots of volatility, with an increased volatility, and therefore we can consider that as a rejection. With that as a as an evidence from the previous session, today we still have a bad low. So we have a strong rejection of the upside, a weak rejection to the downside. So that gives us a, a nice asymmetry, uh, telling us that market is quite likely to take out this previous bad low. Actually, it's not a 100% certainty, not at all, but it, it's giving us a, an evidence that market is weaker going down. It will find more weakness to the in the way previous lows were made. So uh, we have a market going more naturally to the downside than moving back to the upside. That's a really interesting example uh, today has created. So I wanted to show you before we now get started and start talking about the order flow. Uh, first of all. What's order flow? Order flow literally is the analysis of the orders hitting the market. Okay, all of the orders entering the market. Uh, sometimes uh, talking about order flow uh, may have different meanings because sometimes if you if you just say order flow you might just refer to the footprint chart, you may refer to the time and sales, you may refer to the heat map. Okay, there are different tools actually being commonly used to conduct a proper order flow analysis. But the truth is, order flow analysis just refers to whatever, whatever analysis you make, uh, focusing on determining what kind of interactions there are on specific level between buyers and sellers okay so compared to the volume analysis we have talked about until last week focusing mainly on just overall volume not really distinguished between buyers and sellers now we go deeper on how this volume is actually divided into buyers or how many buying or how many selling making that volume but first of all uh, there is a problem is it really possible that on a specific level on a specific area of prices there are more buyers than sellers or more sellers than buyers well, not really. It doesn't really make sense if we put it this way, because as it happens also in a real life example, how can I buy something if there isn't anybody selling me that item to me? I can't. I just can't. For every buyer, there also has to be a seller being the counterpart of that buying and vice versa of course uh, so how how can we determine if buyers are really dominating market over sellers and vice versa we can't really uh, base our our analysis on who is overcoming who we have to 
think in terms of passiveness and aggressiveness of orders because this is actually the the two cat the two main categories orders entering the market are divided to uh, more specifically we have aggressive orders when well let's think a little bit uh when we trade normally we in every platform we i'll make you a live example Uh, hang on just a second. Okay, here it is. Okay, don't be scared by that <laughs> because in a couple in a couple in a couple webinars we're gonna talk about how to read this tool, which actually that's the footprint chart. That's that's one of the main uh, tools used for uh, for the order flow analysis. But before we go to that, in order to under properly understand that, we need to um, talk about what aggressive orders are and what passive orders are because the way they interact each other uh, will determine how we can read the informations provided by these tool and other different tools giving us the framework in terms of order flow analysis well normally uh, when we trade as you can see here from the trading panel provided by the Volsys platform we have different type of orders we have the upper in the upper line we have all buy market or oh, sorry or buy buttons and on the bottom line we have selling buttons okay but they, those are different type of buyings because the first one will just buy the market at the current price the market is trading the second button is buying the bid this is a little bit more difficult but we are gonna go through that in a while the third button starting from left is telling us if we need to use that if we want to place a buy limit order which most of you might already know about that is a pending order let's just press it and see what happens we have a pending order that this green line i'm moving up and down which i can be with which i can place below the current price if i want to place a pending buy order below the actual the, the price which is actually traded at the moment so if I go like this, I've placed a pending buy order here. And if market reaches there, the order is likely to be executed according to certain conditions. Of course, if I want to buy here, I need to have what? Somebody selling what I'm trying to buy at the cheaper price compared to the one the market is actually trading at the moment okay on the opposite side i have a last button at the very right hand side which is a buy stop order this works exactly the opposite way because this that's still a pending order but in order for it to be a stop order i can place I can place it only above the current trading price so it's still a buying order a pending buy order but for it to be a valid stop order buying stop order it needs to be placed above what the current price is but according to 
what those mm, differences between an order, a, a type of order, and a different type of order becomes relevant? Well, it becomes relevant if we just think about the impact each of these order will have on the market. Let's get the let's use these and, and as an example to go through this complex topic, which is the market microstructure. This is what the DOM is. DOM stands for depth of market, also known as the order book, and it shows mainly there are basic DOMs available on the platform and also more advanced versions still available on the Volsys and Volvo platform. It depends by the way we want to configure it. But this is just, I, I prepared to make a screenshot of a basic order book just to talk about what the uh, basic elements are. Of course, the most basic element in, all of the, in, the, in, in this tool is the traded price. Traded price is expressed by those highlighted prices right here. You can't really see my rectangle, I guess. Let me just make a thicker one. Yeah. Rectangle, yes. Those are can you see those two prices are highlighted? One is in red and the other one is in green. Along with all of the other ticks of prices representing something like a price ladder. So each traded price, each single variation in terms of ticks represent one row of the order book. Okay. The traded uh, the, 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 the currently traded prices are the ones highlighted in red and green. Those two levels would respectively represent the best ask or best offer and the one right below the best bid. And of course, the corresponding column of the book are on the left column, sorry, the right column is the ask column or the offer column. The, the left side is the bid side of the order book so why is that important first of all and why there are two traded price even if we are talking about futures so centralized so instru financial instruments being traded on a centralized market so unlike forex or cfds we shouldn't be supposed to have a spread right between the bid and the ask that would sound fair enough right actually it isn't that way because a spread between the best bid and the best ask is supposed to be there in every market just because if we think about that the best ask is the price as you can see where the ask column starts to be populated by those numbers and the best bid is the level where the bid column starts to be populated going downwards as opposed as the ask column going upwards being populated by numbers okay so what do these numbers represent those are 
sellers in the ask side willing to sell be waiting to sell to be selling at a higher price compared to the one market is cur currently trading so what kind of order would they use they are they they want to sell at a at a more favorable favorable price compared to what they want to do so of course they can't have an immediate execution they will have to place a pending order requesting that price for example this one if market is trading here and i want to sell 39 17.25 price tick what i can do is placing is place a selling order a pending selling orders right there and waiting for market to fill actually my order so i am advertising my price as a seller willing to sell at a more favorable price all i have to do is advertising the price as the price i want to get that's exactly the same thing if we are selling a car or an apartment we would just go on a website of ads and writing down an ads requesting for a price the price of course we want to achieve for that for that item for that car for that apartment but once my ad is ready and is published on the website of course it's not sold yet because in order for it to be sold so my selling request gets filled what do i need some buyer accepting that price okay that that somebody some buyer accepting that price i'm asking for so basically <laughs> that's the metaphor or putting a passive orders i'm just placing a selling pending orders over there and I'm gonna act as a passive trader using a passive order waiting for a buyer to accept it and fill it possibly but as we said a little bit earlier if I want to sell above the current price my order according to the exchange rule would be a sell limit order as opposed as if i want to buy and i am looking to buy at a better price for me so below the current trading price it will be a buy limit order So, same example reflected on the other side. If I want to buy at a better price, I'm going to place a pending order somewhere here below the current price. And still, I will have to be waiting for actually some sellers to accept the price I want to buy. So, I am being, I, I'm acting this way i am being a passive trader because first of all that shows that i that the intention is showing that first of all i am strongly price sensitive i want that price i want that price i don't really mind if i will be getting into the transaction or not the most important thing is that I want to get that price. If I can't have that price, I will. Uh, I won't have any execution. So, as long as I'm using that kind of order, that means I priority of pr price as the priority over execution. And of course, that shows. market liquidity why 
those those kind of orders represent market liquidity why because if we still compare all of these orders as exactly to lots of ads being there in a website where there are many ads of cars, apartment, items, shoes, clothes, whatever. If there weren't any ads published, there wouldn't be any opportunity for who is browsing the website to actually make business. If there aren't people willing to sell above the price or buying below the price, even if they are, they are looking actually to yeah to 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 to, to achieve the best prices possible for them, that still represents opportunity. A market without passive orders, it will be a, an illiquid market. A market without any opportunity. Why? Because let's assume for a moment, I am not a passive trader. I don't mind. I'm, I'm not price sensitive. I don't really mind having that specific price. Let's assume I want to be executed at whatever price is it possible to have that execution. So it's exactly the opposite thing i want to be executed at the best the most important thing for me is not the price i'm getting is being in the trade is being in the business so for a moment let's assume i want to buy at the market aggressively in order for me to buy i will need a seller being my counterpart so that the the transaction can have uh, can can be finalized. Okay. Well, if I decide to market in this specific moment at, at the best price, I can actually get my execution. Where will I be likely to have my execution? Here. I am buying aggressively, I'm likely to be executed here because that's the first level, the first level where I have sellers available. The best price so far where I have sellers available. Those sellers are of course passive because they are there waiting for that price to be uh, accepted by a counterpart and in this case i would be the counterpart because if i'm buying this level those are sellers wanting this price i am a buyer not really being interested in which price i'm having for the execution but wanting to be in the trade at whatever price can give me an execution the deal is made okay so the aggressive traders using aggressive orders are traders selling or buying at market Now, you might think already, well, okay, but that means that aggressive sellers or buyers, buyers they would only meet and their orders will be matched with passive sellers of the other sign in the other direction. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Every transactions, every single transaction occurring in the market 
is made by one aggressive side and the other counterpart will be passive. There is a match only between passive and aggressive because that's how the interaction in terms of liquidity, provision and consuming works. I'll make I'll, I'll just go deeper in this example. I just said, okay, I'm buying market right here. Okay, I have 61 passive sellers available to sell. Okay, that means I can buy on that price aggressively up to 61 contracts. Cool. That's the opportunity, of course. That's the liquidity market has on that level that's of course the opportunity as well if i am buying one aggressively one contract what would happen here this 61 will become 60 because i am buying aggressively one the first of those 61 seller passive sellers will be my counterpart following a first in first out logic so the first one would populated that level with the Assume I'm buying only one contract right here aggressively, I am buying sixty two. I am buying sixty two. So, by buying 62 contracts, I am telling the exchange that I want to buy 62 contracts at the best price it can be achieved. Well, the first 61 lots will, of course, find a counterpart right here at the, be at the actual best ask. But, that means that one lot will be offset by this in this transaction. But still, I've told the exchange, execute me 62, not 61, at whatever price that is possible. Cool. For the offset contract being left, what it will be once market has run out of these sellers because my previous 61 lots has consumed them all what it will be the next level where i have market selling sellers available the next tick up so the first 61 lots will be executed at 39 15.5 and the left uh, offset contract will be executed at 39 15.75 and the market will actually tick up so in terms of you might ask yourself at this stage passive order aggressive orders which kind of orders really make the market move which kind of order really make the market tick up or tick down well, actually, they have the same power. <laughs> what it makes the market move up or down is the interaction between those two. If, if aggressive orders are stronger than the relative 
passive orders being there in the same level, then the market will move one tick up if that happens in the ask or offer column. It will tick down if that happens in the bid column. Opposite example, if I have, for example, let's assume here, can you see here we have 200 against 264 passive sellers being there waiting for, for the fill. Okay, in order for this level of price to be overcome and let market tick up from here on, we need at least. 265 aggressive buyers as opposed as for example here where we only need 119 so we can still say that wherever we had a large number here among the passive sellers or the passive buyers that's a possible point of support or a resistance identified directly by the order book in the depth of market because the liquidity itself when we have more orders so that means more liquidity being there it means of course it will need more force to be broken through because that will need more will require more aggressive orders hitting that level and going past well then if market if, if passive orders identify market liquidity we can tell for sure that passive orders provide actually market liquidity and aggressive order according to the relationship we have just talked about they would consume that liquidity aggressive order just take the liquidity that passive orders provide so in order flow analysis we will mostly uh, talk about well actually we will talk about we will be talking about both kind of orders but the first module let's call it module <laughs> we will be talking about in this month will be focusing more on aggr on the analysis of aggressive orders so the ones which actually are executed the actually the, the actual order which go through the market go through the exchange why first of all because they are the easiest to spot those are the orders which can actually be uh, detected more easily by many different tools and because they will introduce us the concept and principle of delta and a discrepancy actually between what between aggressive orders in the buying side and aggressive order in the selling side that's the first dominance we can be talking about when we say order flow analysis then as a more advanced uh, deep dive we will also be talking about also passive order as well and the way they change over time and this is given this is an information given by the heat map which is a visual representation of what the order book is the only difference is that the order book would show us the way how, how much liquidity we have by level price by price expressed by 
numbers. So we have to look and to interpret the row number. Heatmap will just make those number visible. So that will be a visual representation of those numbers and the way they change over time. That gives many interesting patterns which can be used to determine further inflection points. So till now we know how can how we can define inflection points based on volume analysis. This is this gives us another dimension. So we can use this information to have even more inflection points available to make our decisions. It will take a few weeks, but we are going to go through that all. Um, before we move on, let's use these principles to just talk about the way those our orders are matched and also to introduce a third category of orders stop orders do you remember the example i was making on a buy, on a, on a hypothetical buy stop order which was still a pending order but in order for it to to be a valid stop order it has to be placed above the current price if it's buy below the current price if it's a sell order well as we said passive orders are limit orders okay that's quite simple and straightforward aggressive orders are market orders of course but also stop orders why well stop orders are anyway are still pending orders but they are completely different by limit orders because assuming price is here this white line i have a valid buy limit order if we buy below price or we sell above price. A, a stop order would work the exactly in exactly opposite way. We have a valid stop order if it sell below the price. If it's a buy above price so that shows already that by themselves they wouldn't provide even if they are still pending orders they wouldn't provide market liquidity actually they just don't give us any idea of liquidity provision why because they just don't respect the theory of advertised price below and above price and waiting just for for a fill by the counterpart but then also where and when would you normally use a stop order well classical example price is here Maybe you have a high somewhere here. You could decide to, once price break through this high, you decide to buy. But you just would prepare your pending order before market reaches there. Okay, that would definitely be a valid buy stop order. Or Otherwise, 
if you decide to buy here, so you here you go long immediately. And you decide to place your stop loss. Now, if you go long here, your stop loss would be, of course, a selling order because it would be the transaction, the opposite direction by the one you have just used to take your trade, to enter your trade. So it will be a sell. But it will be a sell below the current price. So the stop loss of a long position will be a sell stop as well as stop loss for a selling position would be a buy stop order placed above the price okay so that gives us a very and your target your take profit will be a, still a selling order because that's an order you will need to you will need to close your position a long position will still be a sell but it will be a selling order above the price which makes it a selling order okay the thing is though your stop loss in this in such situation if it gets hit what will happen in the back office in the exchange once market reaches your stop loss the exchange will just have a note that once market reaches here you want to sell aggressively and your Pending stop order will be converted to a selling market order. It will therefore hit the bid, it will hit the bid side of the order book, and it will find its counterpart among the passive buyers being in the bid side. So the stop loss is always supposed to the stop loss of a whatever position it's always supposed to be as, as an aggressive order because that's a stop order it doesn't mean that every stop order is necessarily stop loss but the stop loss it has to be necessarily a stop order anyway both in both of these cases stop orders will enter the market aggressively and they will be executed at the best price available that also explain explains why sometimes during when we are stopped out in our trades we can have some slippage because what happens if whilst i'm trying to sell aggressively here at the level where i'm selling aggressively there are no buyers i will have my execution at the next levels wherever i can find buyers at first so that actually applies to every single market order in order for them to be executed, we also always need to have the passive counterpart. Otherwise, our order won't be executed at the level we decide to enter. And there will be some slippage. That, of course, won't happen with a sell limit order, with a limit order in overall, okay, general. Uh, either i have if i am using a sell limit order either i have a buyer buying aggressively the price i'm asking for and there will be the match between my order and one of the buyer and i will be filled 
on the price I'm asking for, or otherwise I just won't have the fill. If market touch barely touches here and goes back, but there are maybe enough enough buyers to fill my orders order because maybe I am the last in the queue, so there are a few other passive sellers being there from more time than I am. So they will have priority in the queue. I just won't have execution, but I can't have actually a worse execution with a limit order. I won't have any slippage. With market orders, actually, I can. I could have a slippage. So I can have an execution worse than I was expecting to have. So this is very interesting actually because that means if we are using order flow tools able to show us where aggressive buyers are or sellers, if I am reading that properly in some specific way, I can also spot where a few traders, a few or more than actually just a few traders are stopping out are exiting their position i can tell by some specific tools where according to how these stop orders get get triggered if the liquidation is quite heavy or not and with how much force a level is attacked so it's a very powerful information we can achieve through the order flow analysis uh, in fact that's the way that actually orders are matched according to this chain by market orders or buy stop orders, which is exactly the same as we said, as they are converted into market orders, they would find their counterpart among the sell limit orders being there on the level, and the exchange would, would take a note of this transaction because, in this case, a buyer a seller even if they are aggressive the first one and passive that one a transaction takes place but the exchange would just take a little note of only the aggressive side of the trade why because that's obvious that if a transaction could take place there had to be a passive counterpart otherwise this buyer wouldn't have wouldn't have been filled and it will record an ask print what is what is called an ask print that means somebody has hit the ask side of the book it has both yeah yeah it both aggressively the market hitting the ask side of the order book the right one same thing on the other side sell market sell stop being converted to a sell market order the counterpart will be by limit order and the corresponding print it will be a bid print now all of these prints can actually be uh, quickly quickly recorded in a tool called the time and sales time and sales is something looking like this no. as you can see we have a list of all of the trades going to the CME exchange 
for the S&P 500 instrument. Ordered by time, volume going through, in, in, term, in, in terms of lots going through, the price at which that trade has occurred, and of course the color shows whether it's a NASP trade or a bid trade. That's a list of all aggressive trades going on, second by second. Well, sometimes milliseconds by milliseconds. That's, that has been the first, absolutely the first order flow based tool that comes from the 70s. Of course, in the, back in the 70s, market weren't that nervous as they are today. So <laughs> it was actually a little bit easier to determine if buyers, aggressive buyers, are stronger than aggressive sellers and vice versa, just looking at that. Nowadays, of course, as you can see, that's so quick. That's really, really changing so quickly. And it comes with another drawback. If I had to remember or if I want to check what has happened over a specific level, for example, one hour ago, it's very difficult to go back in time and go through a very long list of trades occurred over the last hour to determine what has happened one hour ago. This is very based on the instant. Okay. But the good news is you don't actually need that to analyze the order flow. That was only to explain with a practical example the way market or the way orders are matched by the exchange and what an ask print implications are as well as the bid print because in this after this introduction to the order flow it was very theoretical tonight but it was necessary uh, to go to move on from next week on and starting to analyze all of the order flow based tools but aware of first of all what kind of orders move the market and why do these order move actually the market or not because we all, always have to remember, after all of these long explanations, <laughs> that passive orders are just intentions. They are there, they would provide liquidity, but as, unless they are executed, they can be removed in any, way, in any, in any second. As opposed to that, market orders are executed trade. So once a trade is executed, it's already there. Somebody has put money on the table. So there is a position, no matter how big it is. There is an action. Limit orders are intentions. So the real, the real uh, reading, the real, the, the real lecture we can the best lecture we can possibly achieve in terms of order flow is is looking at the interpreting the interaction between the two kind of orders and today we have explained why there are two different type of orders the way they would interact each other and from next time on we will see how to read this information on a on a tidier <laughs> uh, representation 
uh, rather than just looking at the timing cells, which is a little bit messy, and how to use this information in order to help our trading decision. Uh, I hope uh, everything is clear. Uh, please, if you have any question, just feel free to ask me. We have still a couple of minutes. I hope this webinar was uh, smooth enough, even if we were <laughs> going through uh, a delicate topic, because market market microstructure, I'm perfectly aware that this is this can't this isn't that immediate in some cases. Me personally I had to at the time I had to go through all of this process at least two or three times. <laughs> so <laughs> if you if you feel a little bit confused, don't don't worry. It's just normal. You just need to get the hang of it a little bit, but then after uh, you will understand that almost mathematically speaking. Uh, okay, so somebody is asking me in the chat whether there will be an Italian version of uh of this webinar uh i i would suggest eduardo in that one if there are any questions which uh, they like to be translated uh, in italian specific ones um we can share the emails and the questions that can be sent and we're going to be making sure that we're going to be uh sending those questions back yes yes, yes definitely that uh, it could be a solution yeah okay if if you allow me i would just give a quick answer in mm -hmm. italian so that <laughs> even better eduardo uh, i'm sorry uh, okay no, no, that's perfect uh, allora sì sicuramente ci saranno delle versioni in italiano le stiamo stiamo facendo il calendario con con il team italiano di the trading pit quindi probabilmente sì una serie simile sarà anche in italiano Okay, that's it. So I just I just said that we are planning a series of uh, webinar also with the Italian division of the trading pit. So there will also likely to be in the future a few webinars like this in Italian. So uh, whatever whoever is interested, uh, just stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, I guess there is no other questions. There isn't any other question. Uh, so from next time on, we will be moving up on talking about delta, delta principle, uh, which is strongly related to uh, aggressive uh, traders we have uh, deeply talked about tonight. Uh, and then on, we will move on talking about some interesting features of the Volsys platform, like for example, the footprint chart, uh, the one I will I was showing you at the beginning when I was talking about the trading panel. So uh, stay tuned because after this introduction about type of orders, we will learn how to use those orders, the reading of those orders. Okay. Uh, I think there are no questions for tonight, so um, thank you everybody for your attention as usual and for your interest. Um, we are going to have the next webinar on next, next Wednesday, still some time, uh, talking about Delta principle and how we can use it to uh, have a, a first introduction on order flow analysis. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good night. See you next week.